I showed you guys how to import an image using ActionScript to your Flash projects. Today we're going to go ahead and build a preloader to show the progression of the image coming into your Flash file. So to begin, let's take a look at our library and you'll see that I have two movie clips. One's going to be a fill for the preloader, the other one is the preloader itself. So I'm going to double click to check out its contents. You'll see I have three layers here in the timeline. The preloader text is nothing more than a dynamic text field with preloader underscore txt for its instance name. The fill is the other movie clip. It's just a gray box with a fill underscore mc for it, its instance name. And the stroke is nothing more than a stroke. That's a visual indication of how much I have to load. I'm going to go back to my main timeline by clicking on scene 1 and you'll notice that I do not have an instance of that preloader on the stage. And the reason being is that I want to pull this movie clip onto the stage dynamically via code. So I'm going to right click on it, I'm going to go to properties, you can't see that here but it is there, and you'll see that I bring up my symbol properties. Usually you have it under your basic options, so you just see the name, the movie clip, and usually a registration point here. In this case we're going to use the advanced options and we're going to export this for action script so I can pull it from the library via code. You'll see I get a reference name here via class preloader and it has a base class of movie clip assigned to it. So that just means that it inherits all its properties, you know, functions and methods uh, defined within the movie clip. I'm going to click OK. You'll see that Flash says, hey, there's no class file for this preloader. Do you want me to create one for you? Sure, Flash, thank you very much. I'm going to click OK, and now we can get coding. So the first thing I need to do is open up my actions. You'll see that I have some code from the previous file, tutorial. I need to create a variable that's going to be my instance name, if you will, for the preloader. So preloader underscore MC. I'm going to data type this as not a movie clip, but the actual preloader name that I assigned it in the properties panel. Now I need to go ahead and instantiate it, like everything else in Flash. So I'll set that equal to a new preloader. And there you go. To add this, add this to the stage, I'm going to use the add child method. Add child. And I'm going to add an instance of the preloader underscore MC. I'm going to test that out. And there you go. There's a preloader on the top left of our stage. I'm not liking this, so I'm going to go ahead and place this in the center so we can have it right smack dab in the middle. I'm going to return to the code. I'm going to change the x and y values. Preloader underscore mc dot x is equal to, I'm going to open up a parenthesis here. I'm going to use the stage dot stage whoops, width divided by 2. And I'm going to subtract from it preloader underscore mc divided by 2. We got one property here, it's the actual width value. Now let me explain this here. What this is going to do is going to take half of the width of the movie clip and subtract that from the stage width divided by 2. So half the stage and nudge it over. Half the stage, this movie clip will be placed to the right by subtracting half its width, it'll move it right into the middle. I'm going to go ahead and do this again for the Y position. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste it. Cheating is okay sometimes. I'm going to set the Y property equal to the stage dot stage height this time divided by 2. Now subtract the height value. I'm going to test that out. Oh yeah, there you go. Right smack dab in the middle. Now I'm going to use two event listeners to listen for the progression and remove that preloader when it's complete. So right underneath here, I'm going to go ahead and add two event listeners to the loader. IMG loader dot add event listener. This is going to be the progress event and it's going to listen for the progress. There we go. I'm going to call a function image loading and the last one of course is the complete. 
image loader dot add event listener event event dot complete on complete. Now if I leave this alone, it's not going to work. And the reason because is that I don't need to assign an event listener to the loader. I need to assign it to the information from the loader that's assigned to the content. Kind of crazy, I know, but you just got to add this property. Content. There we go. Loader info. Don't add that property. It's not going to work. Again, going to cheat. Copy this. Paste it. And there you go. Going to write the functions for these bad boys. Function img loading ebt. It's going to be of type progress event. And we're going to void that puppy out. Open curly brace, couple returns, close curly brace. One more function on complete. EBT of type event and void it out. Open curly brace, couple returns, close curly brace. So the first step is let's check out the data coming in from that picture. So I'm going to go ahead and trace EBT.target, which is the information, dot bytes loaded. I'm going to press Control Enter to test it. There you go, 0 to 2600 is the actual file size. If I press Control Enter again, you'll see it increase as that image is being loaded into our project. Now, how do I control this? Well, if you go to your view menu inside your display menu, window, you have a simulate download which acts as if it's being downloaded from the web and then you got some download settings so you can change the download speeds. Well I don't need just the loaded, I need to create a calculation. So I'm going to do is create a variable here, var, I'm going to call it the bytes, I'm going to type that as a number, I'm going to set that equal to ebt.target dot bytes uh, loaded excuse me I'm gonna divide that by ebt dot target yep you guessed it bytes total this will give me a percentage a decimal place a value that I can use for a calculation down here I'm gonna change this to the bytes and control enter 0, 1, control enter again. Now you get some decimal places. This is great. I'm getting a little excited here because I can use this to change the X scale property of the fill so it can show me the progression of this information loaded to my project. Right underneath the trace, I'm going to set the preloader underscore MC, that parent, dot fill underscore MC, which is the movie clip inside its scale x property equal to the bytes. Control enter to test it. Oh yeah, check that out. Now you're seeing the information being loaded into your project. There's your preloader bar. Boom. I'm going to change our text. So back to the code. Preloader. Oh, oops underscore mc dot preloader underscore txt I'm going to set its text property equal to the bytes plus I'm going to cheat here I'm going to throw in a percent sign if you know flash doesn't like mixing up its numbers with strings this will take care of that Control enter to test it. Zero and one. Decimal places. Kind of weird looking here. So we need to add a couple more things to it. First of all, I don't like a lot of decimal places, so I'm going to use the math dot round method. And I'm going to take the bytes. I need to multiply that by 100. So it's going to give me a percentage. Test that out. Oh yeah, check that out. 
The last thing we need to do is remove this movie clip right when it finishes loading. So down here in the bottom, I'm going to use the remove child method, and I'm going to remove the preloader. Test it out one more time, and now you got a preloader. Oh yeah, check that out. So you can use this for importing SWFs, images, just make sure that you have a movie clip inside your library, pull it onto the stage, and use the progress event and complete event to complete this exercise.